we look at this character here, and we know it to be Princess Serenity, but everyone says Neo Queen Seren Serenity, and everybody thinks that this is wrong in the Tokyo Pop version. A lot of people were expecting it to change in the Kodansha print, but as you can see here, again it says Neo Queen Serenity. And a lot of people said that both translators were stupid and wrong, and I saw a lot of troll comments about it saying that this needs to be changed and this is an error. Well, hate to burst your bubble, but if you buy the Japanese print, it says the same thing. Neo Queen Serenity. Look at the rest of the story here. It's exceptionally bright. It was super dark, darker than night. And then all of a sudden, this bright, shining white light appears. You're going to be blind. You can't tell if that's Neo Queen Serenity or Princess Serenity. And look, she's got the giant bow wings in the back. So yeah, she's still mostly Princess Serenity, but... There's been enough alterations in the gown that you can see it looks like she's turning into Neo Queen Serenity. So she's like Neo Princess Serenity at this point. Another thing to point out, fans of the anime emailed me a lot about this one. They said, well, how come Mamoru is calling her the Messiah? If you watched the dub version of the anime, you missed this entire thing. In the subtitled version of the anime and in the original manga, they have this running... Thing where they say, you know, we're looking for the Messiah, the one who can hold the Holy Grail and save everybody from this terrible destruction of peek -boo, you know, Sailor Saturn. And then they find out at the end, oh, that's the one with the Holy Grail. So she's got to be our Messiah. Well, when they dubbed the anime, they didn't want to use that word. Cloverway at that point had the anime, and they didn't want to start royally m pissing off all of the religious coalitions, so they omitted the word Messiah from the entire series, and when they dubbed the anime, there was actually a running gag where each episode they would rename it. So in some episodes, it's the Purity Chalice, it's the Peace Chalice, you're going to hear a lot of really stupid names for it. Well, maybe not as much sense as... Um, you know, a teenage lesbian couple living without parents adopting a child, but, you know, that's that's another story. They're, they slip right into the Super S story arc, and there's a couple of things I want to note about that. The first thing of note, in the manga, they're already in high school at this point, which in Japan starts when you're 16, and the school year starts in April. Over here, our high school starts at 14, which is why a lot of the toys had a lot of misinformation. The second thing of note is that the translation is much better, and you see that with Chibiosa. In the Tokyo Pop version, her first line is, Bunny, come on! You see this letter that she leaves, and I don't know who thought this was funny, but look at this font. Do you know how old this kid is? She's 903 years old at this point, and she's in the body of a tween. No tween writes like this anymore. This is kindergartner handwriting. So her letter's like, Dear Mommy and Daddy, thanks to you, I am now a proud scout, a.k.a. Super Sailor Chibi Moon. Upon completing my training, I've decided to return to the 30th century on April 1st. And it looks like a two. I miss you so much. Please come and pick me up. Love, Rini. Whereas in the Kodansha print, we have an entirely different scene. Her dialogue here is, Isagi! If you keep spacing out, we're going to leave you behind. And then look at this letter. This seems more her style. This is definitely in keeping with her. You know, dear father and mother, because remember, she's a tween. Tweens do this. This is me, Usagi Small Lady Serenity, also a Super Sailor Chibi Moon. Your sister hasn't been born yet, sweetheart. I think they know who this is. I mean, Luna P doesn't deliver letters for everybody, does she? Thanks to you, have become a full-fledged guardian, acknowledging that, you know, the version of you in the past did this. Now my training journey is finished. I'll be coming back to the 30th century on April 1st. I want to see you so much. Please come to pick me up. Isagi. Now that sounds a lot more like Chibiosa, and the penmanship is much, much better. So you might be wondering, how was this in the Japanese version? Well, as we can see here, she has more dialogue when she's yelling to her mom, you know, come on, are we leaving you behind? As for her penmanship in the Japanese version, I, um, yeah. Chibiosa is, is all over the place because she wants to grow up in a hurry because she states, you know, she's 903 years old. This is from the Tokyo Pop print. Isagi is like, whatever, you're Darian's daughter. Stab. You know, she just rubs that in. You know, you should stop crushing on him. That's your dad. A lot of people thought this scene was kind of creepy because here she is thinking about her mom naked. And she's like, you know, I want round breasts like my mom. I want love and legs like my mom. And a lot of people are really creepy, and they thought, well, is this going to be taken out? First of all, this scene is much funnier in the Kodansha print, because they put back a lot of the dialogue that was missing. Yeah, this creepy scene is con 
completely intact. In fact, there's more dialogue making it creepier. Uh, that's your mom. That's your mom. Stop that. That's your mom. For years, different websites had the Ron name up. They said, well, this character has got to be Elios. They would go on these long tangents about why his name should be Elios. That makes no sense. Keep in mind, much of Sailor Moon is based on Greek mythology, so you're going to see names like Serenity, Endymion, and appropriately, Helios. Because he's named after Helios. You should really Google who that is. Now, the Kodansha print and the Tokyo Pop print both got that right. It's Helios. And a lot of people were like, well, no, that can't be. He's got to be Helios, right? Wrong. I have the Japanese book right here. And his name, for those of you who've always been curious, in Japanese, Helios. 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 There is no Helios. Okay, there's no Elias here. There's no Elliot here. This is Helios. Even the dub version of the anime got this right. It's Elysian and it's Helios. Yes, this is Elysian. Even the Tokyo Pop book got this right. Even the Japanese book has it as Elysian. Even the subtitled anime has it as Elysian. The reason why I say that is because the people who thought this was Elios also thought he lived in the land of Illusion or Elysian. That's not even close to where he lives. He lives in the land of Elysian. And that, too, comes from Greek mythology. Every Sailor Moon book has gotten it right. This book got it right. This book got it right. And this book is getting it right. So let that be the end of the discussion. His name is Helios. Another translation issue has been with the main villain. Now, in the Tokyo Pop book... She was named Queen Neferania. Now, this also appears on several bootleg DVDs and on some of the Japanese merchandise, Neferania. In the official subtitled version of the anime, and in most of the other Sailor Moon goods, including half of the trading cards in Japan, and the Kodansha print, her name is Nehelania. This has been a translation error for a long time. A lot of people have wondered, well, what is her name? Is it Nehelania or Neferania? It should be Nehelania. And the reason why is because there is no PH in Japanese. So, you know, in Japanese, I'm sorry to tell you this, it's Nehelania. Now, this causes a lot of confusion, because like I said, even the official Japanese merchandise, like the trading cards, mix it up all the time. But just for your edification, Kodansha calls her Nehelania, and Nehelania is more accurate. This was the last thing I noticed, and the first thing that just made me squeal. So, the Tokyo Pop book, the first one gets their names right. These are the Amazonas Quartet, and also my favorite villains to turn good. Um, sorry about the spoiler there. Uh, a lot of people wondered about their names, though. Now, in the dub version of the anime, they screwed up some of the names pretty badly. And in the Tokyo Pop books, they got their names right to a point, and then later on change it, and nobody knows why. Kodansha corrects this. So, this is Jinjin. This is Sere Sere. This is Palapala. Pala, and this is Ves Ves. This is important because of what happens in the next couple of books. Um, some versions of the anime, including the dub version, call her Para Para because R and L are the same. It should be Palapala, Pala, and you'll understand why later on. Jinjin, I don't think anybody screwed up on. Sere Sere, some translations have it as Sirle Sirle, or Sarah's Sarah's. That's more of an, an error right there. But her name should be Sere Sere. As for this little one, her name is Ves Ves. And some translations have her as Basu Basu, or Bes Bes, because, you know, a lot of people think that there is no V in Japanese. There is. So, now you know what their names are. And... Jun, Sere, Pala, and Ves are taken from different asteroids, and that's going to become very imp important later on. Another naming issue, uh, this changes a little by little. The Tokyo Pop version changed their names a couple of times, and the dub and sub of the anime changed their names. But for right now, we have Tiger's Eye, Hawk's Eye, and Fish Eye, or Fish's Eye. Like here we have Hawk's Eye, Fish's Eye, and Tiger's Eye. And this is going to change a couple of times. 
And don't worry about that, because it's like that with most of what you see out of these three. Like here we have tiger's eye instead of tiger eye, hawk's eye, and fish's eye. And that's because of what they're derived from. This is their original form. The anime screws up this story pretty badly, but in the manga, they are the Amazonist Quartet's pets. And let the fan fiction begin! This time we do not get any translation notes, nor do we get a preview of the next book. And the next book is due out at the end of January. But we are treated to a cute little thing in the back, where you see all of them like this. Oh yeah, this is also the start of a very interesting story for the next book, but anyway, let's not spoil that. If you like Super Us, you're going to need this book because this explains what happens a little bit better. And as always, this is a must-have for every collector.